Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Marcus Obermeyer. I'm working for Siemens in the very exciting field of additive manufacturing. And what I would like to talk with you about today is the automated additive manufacturing 4.0. So I don't know how many of you or who of you has been in touch with additive manufacturing, with industrial additive manufacturing in the past couple of months or years. But from what I have seen, there is not much what I would call fully automated additive manufacturing. So we are talking to a, a lot of partners and customers. And when I ask the question, why, why don't you go into mass serious additive manufacturing? Um, there, are, there is kind of a, a mixture of answers. They say there are some optics, obstacles to overcome, things like um, they, don't, they miss the, this fully integrated data and process chain. There's maybe some, some links missing. The post-processing steps are, in some cases, way too manual still. Or things like uh, we don't have the process repeat repeatability of different uh, process uh, machines in the process chain. So I wouldn't stay here if I wouldn't believe that there is way more possible already than um, some, some might imagine. And um, therefore, I want to wanna share with you a story from a native additive manufacturing design part, how it goes all the way through through an entire digitalized big um, factory series production. And um, therefore, um, I decided to bring with me a use case. Some of you might have already seen it. It's also over there in the center of the booth. It's the EDAC space frame or the next gen space frame 2.0. Um, it was developed around one and a half years ago um, together with our partners, EDAC and um, Siemens, Fraunhofer, IIPD was part of it, Concept Laser, Constellium, and the BLM group. And the very nice thing about this concept is that it combines traditional or like traditional material like aluminum profiles with cutting edge technologies such as additive manufacturing. And the big benefit out of this is the high flexibility. So you can, without any tooling, you can um, create those free form um, native additive manufacturing parts and combine them, weld them together with aluminum profiles, which then gives you the flexibility that you're able to um, have different Sp uh, frames of the car for different powertrain concepts and so on. So I also brought this part with me. Um, I'm going to hand it around in the audience that you can take a look at it. it um, or you can already see it, it has this bionic design, um, which is only possible for additive manufacturers, also including some ladder structures. So I'm going to hand it around. Please make sure that it comes back to me later on. <laughs> um, and yeah, take a look at it. Um, it's really... Um, um, really uh, cutting-edge technology. Okay, with that use case, um, we want to go all the se steps from the digital twin of the product, where we design our product, where we simulate and optimize it, through the digital twin of production, where we end, uh, prepare it for production, do all the steps which, which are necessary for uh, printing the part, but also for post-processing it, and then going on to the real shop floor, to real production factories, all the way through those uh, entire automated automa uh, automated um, manufacturing facilities, okay? So let's look into the digital twin of the product. When we want to design those um, additive printed parts and we want to use it in the most optimate, uh, optimative way for, for additive manufacturing, we um, use software to um, create that bionic structure. So to really create shapes which haven't been possible with conventional manufacturing and to really leverage the whole potential. And for that, we have software. We give just the software some little constraints and then it develops um, the, the, the size and, um, and the shape of the material automatically. But of course, software cannot do anything, everything. So therefore, we need to make sure that the designer can also bring in this experience. And some, in many cases, the designer still wants to make some minor adjustments. And we use our technology con conversion modeling in order to allow those ad um, adjustments in a very innovative and um, um, modern way. Then, of course, we want to validate our design in, um, in order to get feedback, whether the part is strong enough, how much is um, the stress which is occurring, how much our diff uh, and, and we calculate different load cases. And um, we want to give the designer also a feedback already in that stage about the printability of his part. So 
the designer can see how, how much effort is it to post-process it, for example, because he can see here um, what, how much support structures he probably would need. So this, what we call design for additive manufacturing, gives the designer very fast feedback so he can iteratively improve the design of his, uh, of his, of his part very fast. And the nice thing is really that it's all in one software environment. So you can make ch many changes throughout the process. It doesn't um, it cost you a lot of time to, to export or import within various tools. You just click on the refresh button and um, you have um, the new design applied to your um, post, uh, steps later on. So now that we have a design which we say, okay, this is, this is worthwhile giving it a shot and printing it, before we actually print it, and, and printing always costs time, material, it's, it's, it, we have to do that steps first in a, in a digital environment because this is much faster. And um, one thing is, of course, that we need to prepare the parts for printing. So everybody knows how to print a Word page uh, in a 2D printer. And basically, for additive manufacturing, that's not um, um, much difference between that. You select a certain printer. It gives you the print space. You place your part either automatically or manually in the build tray and, and, and optimize how it's then um, being uh, oriented. Then you have to create for some technology those support structures which are needed in order to have, the, if you have faces which have a certain angle to the, to the, um, relative to the build plate, they need support. And that can, can all be done very easily in, a, in, in the software environment. And then when we talk about additive manufacturing, in many technologies we are using laser power to melt metal. And you can imagine laser power metal melting, that's high temperature. And what happens in many cases is that this temperature results to um, a um, thermal distortion, it's called. So it's changing its shape because of the heat you put into the part. It can also in some cases um, have local overheating. So with, with our software, we predict how this is heating up and cooling down. And we also predict how the, the shape is going to change. And we can compensate against that. So meaning if your part is bending to the left, and um, we compensate simply to the right, and in the end, it's, it's a neutral in the middle. And um, in the end, we uh, make sure that, that the part comes up in a, out in a way how it's intended to do. But it doesn't stop with the, with the printing process. We also have to take the post-processing steps into account. And one example is those um, support structures. If you look into many additive manufacturing facilities, you see people using pliers, cracking away those support structures, using uh, manual grinding tools to, to grind them away. And for large, serious production, that's just not feasible. So we need to have um, a repeatable process. And therefore, we can just use our integrated CAM environment to machine the support structures away. And also, same thing for inspection process. So we use our CMN tools to do the inspection for the part, calculate those inspection um, program for the inspection machine automatically. OK. So we have seen how to design the part. We know how to um, prepare it for production. Let's go to the real shop floor. Let's go to, um, um, to the real machines. And here again, Siemens is helping with all its know-how and the automation um, technology to, to make those machines more reliable. And if we imagine an entire factory full of machines, we have to take certain, certain things uh, into account. One is, for example, that we need probably a mom MES system because we are handling different powders here. We maybe, if you're using powder for 3D printing, you can also recycle it, use it multiple times if, if, it's, not, um, if it's not melted together. And then you probably want to fill it up with new powder and you're mixing different powders. And um, you, we call this genealogy of the powder. So there is a powder mixed together with that powder and so on. And in order to make sure that that um, you, uh, you can um, identify quality issues or whatever, you need that traceability. And that get, you get with um, those more many yes system, which we then sp developed specific functions for additive manufacturing. But of course, also, the, the printing process, that's, that's the core of the entire process. And what you can see here is our additive manufacturing facility in, in Sweden. When I said there is not much as a fully automated additive manufacturing factory yet, 
this is one of the, of, the, of the very little examples where we have really large-scale industrial system in, 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 a, in, a, in a high number, printing 24-7 for our gas turbine business. So this is really cutting edge. You would not find this, uh, this uh, in many places in the world. And this where is where Siemens Digital Industries is also applying our know-how in, in, in making machines more reliable, making machines uh, easily to maintain, making machines uh, easy, more easy to engineer. That's where we apply that knowledge uh, also and, and, and make those printing machines even better. Again here, it doesn't stop with the 3D printing process. We have to take the uh, post-processing into account. And I may, maybe you have seen this example already on the stage. Magnus presented it already a couple of times. It's the automated depowdering of, 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 of the parts. So you put this part into the machine, and the machine tilts and turns the, the part to get the powder out. But this is not only done uh, randomly, so we calculate with an algorithm how to orient the part in order to get the part out in the most efficient way. So it's kind of a 3D labyrinth, and um, that's, again, uh, um, the, where Siemens helps the machine builders to de design those products with Siemens automation equipment and helps with our software tools to um, um, make them intelligent, digitize the whole process. Another example is um, um, removing the support structures um, in CAM, we saw how to remove those with a, with a CNC tool. We can also use robots for doing that. And actually, this robot, which you can see behind me, is on the show. He's over there in the, in the Digital Enterprise Showcase. And um, he, in this video, you can see how the robot is gripping the part, how it's removing the support structures. In the future, we can also think of CNC tools and robots um, doing both the process, the robot is doing the, the handling for the machine, then the machine is cutting off the part, the robot is picking it out again and doing the finishing and so on. So they share the, 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 the um, machining process. And of course, um, we need to feedback our insights in the actual process. So we need um, um, we use MindSphere and cloud computing to actually get data out of the process and feed them back into our digital twins. But this all doesn't make an entire factory yet. So what about the factory? Yeah. So um, Team Additive from Siemens put all this pieces together. And now we, we, we developed something which we call um, the Baukasten for, for additive manufacturing. So here you can see, we, we were thinking of um, this part over there. What if we want to print this part 100,000 times a year? So roughly about, let's say, 100 cars a year, a month. Um, this is kind of small for, for automotive industry, but it's huge for additive manufacturing. And um, this is how such a factory would look like in our point of view. We, we were, got the feedback in from our partners who told us, OK, um, we need to arrange this machine in that and that direction, and we need that space in between. We can simulate the ways of the HEVs throughout the production. We can, see, um, uh, we can simulate different shifts, whether we were doing, work doing a one-shift model or two-shift model or whatever. So all this is possible, bringing that all together and building those huge factories. So this is yet a digital model, but I th I'm pretty sure in the next 350, uh, uh, five day, 65 days until Hanover Fair 2020, there we will work hard on bringing that onto, onto the ground, making that real. And um, by having that said, I thank you very much for your attention. Team Additive Manufacturing is over there in the center of the booth, is happy to answer all your questions. So thank you very much for your attention. and. Have a nice, successful fair. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.